Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. My name is Nadia Sands, and this, of course, is learn how to edit stuff. So today we're gonna to be talking about adjustment layers, what they're good for, what they're bad for, and my overall thoughts and opinions on adjustment layers, and I have a lot. I, I, I don't have many. Three, actually. Color grading and effects, the good and the bad. Tracking, and of course, transitions, including the ever so popular, so coveted, sought after, smooth zoom transition. Oh my God, yeah, we're gonna cover it today. All right, fire it up, fire up Premiere, open it up, we're getting started. All right, we're talking adjustment layers today, so why don't you go ahead and put some footage down in your timeline on video track one, and then we're going to create an adjustment layer in our project window by simply coming down here to this new item button, coming to adjustment layer, make sure that it is your project dimensions and click OK, and then drag that right onto your video layer two and put it over the entirety of one of your clips on the timeline. Now, the first thing we're gonna be talking about is color grading on an adjustment layer. And some of you commented on my last video, the eight premier tips and tricks, shouldn't you be color grading on an adjustment layer and it's kind of a yes no situation. Yes, you can color grade on an adjustment layer and it is non-destructive, but it's also non-destructive to drop a color grade right on the clip because you could always just delete that color grade off the clip. You're not burning anything into the video itself. So non-destructive versus destructive kind of comes from a Photoshop era of thinking where if you apply some sort of effect to a layer in Photoshop and then rasterize the layer, there's no way of getting that back. But in Premiere, it's very simple. If you drop a color grade on a clip, you could always just delete it off and get back to your source footage so technically color grading on a clip versus an adjustment layer isn't destructive or non-destructive because you can get rid of it either way. So with the adjustment layer selected, I will come up to the color tab in Premiere and then I will come into my color panel and I will grade this just like I normally would. Okay, cool. I'm liking the way that this looks. Now I can just turn this thing on and off, right? And I can see the original source footage or I can view the grade on the adjustment layer. Now, hypothetically, what if this grade doesn't copy over to my next clip? Let's try it. It doesn't, it's too warm. So if you guys were to have a bunch of clips on your timeline and you have one adjustment layer for all of your color correction, you'll very quickly find out that the color grade from this clip doesn't match the color grade of this clip. And so now you're gonna be cutting this, you're gonna be adjusting the color grade on this adjustment layer here. And then you're gonna have to do that for every clip on your timeline and the more clips you have, the more confusing this is gonna become. So that's why I say to drop the color grade on the master or drop the color grade on the clip itself. In this case, this is one really, really long clip. So I wouldn't grade the master. I would just put the grade on the clip, but you can also do adjustment layers if you wanted to. And then you can maybe just copy these two together and you can come up and change the label. And so that way you know that this adjustment layer and this clip are always together and you can kind of label them color wise like that. But adjustment layers aren't just good for color correction, we can also drop effects onto this adjustment layer as well. So if we come over to our effects tab, we come over here to our video effects, and maybe we wanna drop a distort on here and a mirror effect. And I will move the reflection center. Maybe I'll move the entire position of the clip over to the middle. And now I've added a color correction and an effect to this adjustment layer. And if I just turn this adjustment layer off, you'll see that it goes back to the original clip settings. And I had to move my clip over in frame with the position data in order to get the mirror effect to work. But if I wanted to get rid of all of this stuff, I can just delete the adjustment layer and I can come over to my original clip here and I can just reset the position. And now I'm back to where I started from and no harm done. So adjustment layers are good for adding effects and color correction on top of clips because you can very simply deactivate it or just delete it entirely and get back to square one if you wanted to instead of deleting things off of the clip. I totally understand. I think it's a case of preference, honestly. You can either drop stuff on an adjustment layer or you can drop stuff on the clip itself. I'm the clip itself guy. You guys may be the adjustment layer guys or girls. Hey, I don't wanna, you know, I, uh, it's 2018. The political climate is all over. Guys, girl, whatever you're doing. Uh, anyways, that was color correction and effects on the adjustment layer. Let's move on to tracking. All right, with the adjustment layer selected underneath the opacity dropdown on the adjustment layer itself, I'm gonna grab this pen tool and I'm just gonna draw a square around my buddy Anthony riding his bike. Right, now we've got a square, really cool. What I wanna do is I wanna blur him out in the frame because I don't like him riding his bike on the beach. You're out of here, buddy. But now I've drawn a square around him and I'm just gonna come up here to this little play button and I'm gonna hit the play button and it is going to track the video and track the mask on the adjustment layer so I can then go in and add some effects to the adjustment layer and then it is technically non-destructive on the clip. But it, again, you can delete it. It's doing it in real time. I'm just trying to buy time. It's almost done. Let's go back to it, huh? All right, now that that's finished, I can come over here to my effects. I can type in blur and I can drop a Gaussian blur right on that adjustment 
adjustment layer. And now I can come down here and just adjust my Gaussian blur. And there you go, guys, he is blurred out. Maybe we give a little bit of feather here, maybe adjust the mask area. And now when I play this through, he is blurred out and nobody knows that he was riding his bike on the beach. Wonderful. And then again, I can just delete or disable this adjustment layer and get back to square one. But this is great for tracking anything in your frame and adding effects onto a tracked selection area in Premiere. Now, Premiere didn't used to have a good tracking feature, but now it kind of does. You used to have to do it in After Effects and it was super confusing and annoying, but now you can do it right inside of Premiere and drop effects onto that mask selected area, which is super cool. So adjustment layers 100%, 100% are good for tracking masks in Premiere. And now let's move on to what you've all been waiting for, the smooth zoom transition in Premiere using adjustment layers because the whole thing is about adjustment layer, but okay, okay, let's dive in. Now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna create two adjustment layers, so make sure that you have a video three on your timeline. Let's come over to our project layer and let's drop our adjustment layer on here and go over one, two, three keyframes just on this adjustment layer, and we're only gonna be working with this one for now. So. What we're gonna do first is click on our adjustment layer, come over to our effects tab, and we're gonna type in replicate. And then we're gonna drop that replicate onto the adjustment layer. It's gonna create a grid, and we're gonna change the replicate from two to three, hit enter, and now we've got a nice little grid going here. But we're not done yet, ladies and gentlemen. Type in mirror over here, and we're gonna drop a mirror on this adjustment layer, and we're gonna move our reflection center over so that the frames and the sky are touching each other. Now you guys may have different footage here, so it may look different, but basically what you're gonna wanna do is bring over the side frame of the video to be touching this main layer here so that it's gonna create kind of a seamless effect instead of just having squares on the screen. So that's one. We're gonna drop a second mirror on there and we're gonna change the reflection angle to 90. And now it's gonna do the bottom. So we're gonna use our second little number here and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna line up the lines together. Boom, there you go. We're gonna drop a third mirror on there and we're gonna change the reflection angle to 180. And we're gonna bring our first number all the way over and we're gonna line up the sides on that line there. There you go. And a fourth mirror and we're going to change the reflection angle to 270. And now we're gonna bring our second number right there. So now we're creating this very cool like mirror dome effect. It kind of looks like a Doctor Strange type effect. And if you guys like this, you can just leave that. That's a thing, a mini lesson inside the lesson, but we're not done. Trust me, we've done the mirror, let's move on. So now we're gonna take our second adjustment layer and we're gonna drop it right on top. And now we're gonna go from the cut point, we're gonna go three frames to the left. One, two, three. And then this is going to serve as our zoom layer. So now click on our top adjustment layer. We're gonna come up to our effects and we're gonna type in transform. We're going to drop a transform right on that adjustment layer. And now we are going to set a scale keyframe right here at the very beginning. And we're gonna to go to the end here. I'm actually gonna pull this out one frame so I can set a keyframe at the very end. And we're going to set another scale here. And on this second scale, I'm gonna turn this to 300 because we made three replicates. And you'll see why in a second if I go frame by frame. Here we go, we're zooming in, we're zooming in. And now we can see the outside edges of our mirror effect, but we're gonna continue to zoom to 300%, which is theoretically going to set it back to center. And now our clip can play out normally from there. It's just simple math, guys. Trust me on this one. So now the last thing we're gonna do is click on our top adjustment layer. We're gonna uncheck this box that says use composition shutter angle, and we're gonna crank the shutter angle up to 360. It's gonna give it that nice motion blur effect, and now we're zooming into the next video. You can see the edges are replicating itself so that we don't see any black outlines, and then we're into our video here. Now, we can make this a little bit smoother by clicking on our adjustment layer. Again, I'm gonna move this over one frame so I can see my keyframes easier. I'm gonna highlight my first keyframe, right click on it, and ease out of the gate. And we're gonna click on our last keyframe, right click and ease into the finish line. And if I were to tool down this scale property here, you can kind of see that it's doing a nice Bezier curve. And then with these keyframes selected, what we're gonna do is take our velocity slider down here and we're just gonna simply move each one of these horizontally only and we're gonna put the peak on our playhead right here. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So I'm just gonna move these horizontally and I'm gonna make sure that we're not going up or down because that's gonna adjust our scale. And you can kind of see right here that you can stay horizontal as much as possible. And we're gonna put the peak of the dome right at our cut point. And what that's gonna do is it's actually gonna smooth out the animation and just make it a little bit nicer to look at. And it's gonna be a nice smooth zoom versus a little chunky zoom. 
and then we'll take our adjustment layer, trim it back, and now, ladies and gentlemen, check it out. My God, we've done it. We've done the smooth zoom transition, and it didn't take too long. And you can kind of adjust it and play with it to your liking, but that is transitions on an adjustment layer in a nutshell, specifically the smooth zoom transition, but you can do other transitions. I'm doing the Trump hands again. I hate that I do that, but you know, it's we're here to have some fun, guys, all right? Well, that does it today for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. Remember, remember, Learn How to Edit Stuff merch is available now underneath the video description below. You, yes, you can purchase merch from me, ha, and support the channel and also look cool doing it. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel and also check out the last video that you missed. We do them here weekly at Learn How to Edit Stuff. You know that, I know that. Hey, social media, Naughty and Sands, hit me up, ask me if you want me to do a tutorial and I will try my best to do it. Subscribe, check out the last video and I will see you next time.